Hello, I'm Kendall House, and this presentation is on behavioral ecology. And behavioral ecology, like evolutionary psychology, also stresses ultimate explanations of behavior and ultimate causes. I hope you enjoy it. This presentation is called, What is Human Behavioral Ecology? And human behavioral ecology derives from a classic paper published in the early 1960s by a student of animal behavior named Nico Tenbergen. It was published in 1963, and it was called On the Aims and Methods of Ethology. And in this paper, among many other things that it accomplished, uh, Nico Tenbergen argued that past evolution can never be subjected to experimental proof. So we've got this problem. Uh, how could we ever observe behavior in the past? But the survival value of current behavior is open to experimental inquiry. So among other things, he was arguing for quantitative experimental methods of observation and the idea was that you could study the ultimate sources of a behavior by examining its survival value in the contemporary world, in its current environment. So the current survival value of behavior can be observed directly. And this is at the heart of behavioral ecology and at the heart of animal behavior studies. Now, methodology and the term behavioral ecology are equivalent terms. Back in the 1960s, the study of animal behavior was called ethology. Uh, today, it's referred to as behavioral ecology. But both of those refer, after Tinbergen, to the effort to explain animal behavior as a product of evolutionary adaptation. And what that means is they're trying to explain animal behavior as a product of natural selection. And what that means is that they're trying to explain animal behavior using ultimate explanations, looking for ultimate causes. So what is an evolutionary adaptation? Well, as behavioral ecologists approach it, adaptations are traits that provide their bearers with the highest relative fitness in their environment. So that's a definition from Principles of Animal Behavior, the first edition. Uh, the author there is Lee Allen Dugatkin. If you turn to other textbooks on animal behavior, you'll find similar definitions of adaptation. And what they stress is relative fitness enhancement. And that's what you're looking for when you're studying animal behavior. So then how can we observe survival value? Well, the basic approach is to directly observe or experimentally manipulate uh, the environment or the situation of the animal and then determine whether the outcome is adaptive. <clears throat> and what we mean by is it adaptive is does it improve reproductive success either directly or indirectly? So just surviving can improve reproductive success, but reproducing is even better. And an example of this are studies of the, the behavior of eagles. This is a golden eagle, and uh, that's the older golden eagle. One egg is laid first, and it hatches first. And that eagle chick is looking over at the other egg. And eagles have this really interesting behavior. It's called obligate siblicide. So what's going to happen when that other egg hatches is if this first chick is still alive, it's going to kill its sibling. And it does that on a, in an obligate fashion. So this kind of poses some puzzles, right, in terms of what we think about as Darwinian uh, explanations. And one of the puzzles is, well, why would the parents of the eagle lay more eggs than necessary? If the one chick's going to kill the other, why, why not just lay one egg? It seems wasteful. And secondly, well, why would the older chick kill its sibling? Uh, that seems odd because the sibling is its closest relative. How would these things have evolved? And the 
hypothesis on this is called the insurance egg hypothesis. The basic idea is that by laying two eggs, the parents have an insurance policy. So if the older chick dies, the younger chick will hatch and survive. On the other hand, if the older chick lives, it will kill the younger chick. Uh, but presumably, you have a greater likelihood from the perspective of the parent of having a surviving offspring if you lay two eggs rather than one. So how can we test that? Well, the way that behavioral ecologists test it is they try to figure out uh, using quantitative methods whether or not laying a second egg does increase offspring survival. And so obligate sibilicide occurs in a number of species of birds. And indeed, it does it appear uh, that if there's just one egg, the chances of survival are lower than if there are two eggs. So it does raise offspring survival. The second question they try to answer is, are resources really so constrained uh, that raising two chicks is not feasible? So why didn't it evolve so that the parents raise two chicks? And it appears that as the chicks get older, they can't keep up with feeding them. And so they do better feeding just one. They have a higher likelihood of survival. So adaptive behaviors are behaviors that have been selected because they confer reproductive advantages. And there's two key steps then to doing behavioral ecology. The first step is to identify a behavioral trait that is of interest, like obligate sibilicide, and then you want to explain that. The second step then is to observe the reproductive outcomes of that behavior and develop hypotheses based on adaptive logic to explain it, and then collecting the data to see whether or not the hypothesis explains what you're trying to explain. And this approach uh, stresses ultimate causes. This is all about ultimate causation, not proximate causes. HBE, or human behavioral ecology, is simply the extension of the concepts and methods and theoretical framework of animal behavioral ecology to human behavior. So it's just the behavioral ecology of humans. And this started in the, about the mid-1970s. These two books were fundamental to that. Uh, the first one, edited by Napoleon Chagnon and William Irons, is called Evolutionary Biology and Human Social Behavior. And later, about a decade later, a second volume came together called Adaptation in Human Behavior. And these are both excellent examples of human behavioral ecology. So adaptive behaviors, again, have been selected because they confer reproductive advantages. And uh, that's the basis of human behavioral ecology. And there's two key steps uh, to doing human behavioral ecology. So you'll notice there's some repetition here. You don't have to change the method at all or the concepts to do human behavioral ecology. And the first thing you do is identify a behavioral trait of interest. And this might be uh, the Hadza, our hunter-gatherers in Tanzania. And it was observed that Hadza grandmothers work really hard. They're very hard workers, uh, and they bring home food, right? And so why do Hadza grandmothers work so hard? And so then we go over and we say, well, what is the reproductive outcome of that? What might be the benefit that had been selected for? And you try to see, uh, does the effort of grandmothers, uh, does their working so hard and bringing home food, does this increase the survival of their grandchildren? And that has been tested uh, by human behavioral ecologists, and it appears that maybe the answer is yes. So thank you for listening.